Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with another review and this time it's the brand new Blue G91 Pro. This is a slight refresh from last year's G90 Pro. They've changed a few things, brought it back out again this year, MSRP 250 bucks, but right now it went on sale today. You can get it for 149 limited time. Once that's gone, it'll be 249. But also the first 100 people that pick it up, get a pair of these, they're brand new blue Aria Pod Plus True Wireless Series earbuds. So, some decent stuff going on here. Definitely an interesting phone. I want to talk about it, do the full review in this video. But before we get into that, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now, let's take a look at the Blue G91 Pro. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing so we can get in here and see what all comes in the box. Of course, Blue is known all over for including everything but the kitchen sink in here. So we can see here the G91 Pro. This is what it looks like in the factory wrapping. Go ahead and enjoy taking off the plastic wrap, which is one of the most enjoyable parts. I know people love to make their little ASMR videos and stuff, but take everything off, get it ready to where we can get a look at the phone. And it is a beautiful, beautiful phone. This is a moonstone color, like I was saying. It's not going to be available until October. You can get the graphite one now. You get an up-close look at the cameras there, the profile. It's a really, really sharp-looking phone. Everything that you need here, you got your cameras, you got your USB-C, you've got your speaker down there, your headphone jack, and you've got the dedicated Google Assistant button over here on the side, which is key. Very clutch. I like that. Now, inside the box, we've got the power brick. You've got an included 30-watt power brick, which is going to get you recharged quick, fast, and in a hurry. Not like Apple, not like Samsung cheating you out of your power brick. you got a pair of earbuds in here. Straight out of the box, plug those in, use those if you want. And you've got a charging cable, USB Type-A to USB Type-C to use with your power brick and the SIM ejector tool, which I'm going to use real quick to show you inside the phone. We're going to take a look at the SIM tray. What's beautiful about this one, it's a dual SIM phone. You've got two SIM slots and you've got an SD card slot. You don't have to sacrifice your second SIM slot to put an SD card in there. I really like that. Comes with a protective case. This is really nice too. It's hard to get accessories with some of these phones, especially when they first come out. This one is protective. It's the same one they had last year. You've got the raised edge, the bezel protection for your screen. If you place your phone down on a flat surface, it won't scratch it up if you place it down. You've got the recess cutout protection for the cameras and for the fingerprint sensor back there. And the color just pops and looks really good showing through there as well. And last but not least, we do have the a glass screen protector in addition to the film one that's already installed the phone. So you've got everything you need ready to go straight out of the box as soon as you get this brand new blue phone. Also, I wanted to show you the Aria Pods Plus real quick just so you can get a look at these. I love this purple color. This is what the packaging looks like. It supports up to Bluetooth 5.1, about six hours of music playing time, four hours of talk time. It's got a premium metal housing and it's charged with USB-C. So good to go there. It's got a neat little case here. You pop the lid up and then it's neat because you can see the charging status on each individual earbud while it's sitting in the case like that. Pretty neat. I haven't seen anything like that before. Like I said, USB charger, nice metal box, and they look pretty neat. They're touch sensitive. They've got the little touch tiles on them, and they're pretty comfortable when you put them in your ear, even for extended periods of time. It's just a decent little earbud. I was really surprised to see them kind of enter into this market, especially combined with this phone launch but also like I said if you are one of the first hundred buyers of the phone you get a pair for free if not you can pick them up on Amazon and here we are with the G91 Pro now this is a sharp looking phone I've been wanting to show this off I've had this for about two weeks now maybe about 10 days and as soon as I took it out of the box they told me up front they're like hey just so you know when you get this phone you're gonna be like mind blown and I totally have been I did not expect this at all. Unfortunately, you can't pick this color up until October. There's another color which is available now, which is graphite, which looks perfectly good too. You're just gonna have to wait till October if you wanna grab one of these. So you're gonna miss out on like today's specials. Hopefully they'll do some other special once this one is available. But this color option, definitely one of the best colors I've ever seen on a phone. It's like this combination of like opal and cotton candy and it, it just looks really cool. I like it. Now you can see some things on the back here quad camera array, and a fingerprint sensor. Still got the traditional old fingerprint sensor, which works really well. It doesn't have any problems. And that's good. Sometimes if something's not broke, 
don't try and fix it. It also has some biometrics on here. You can do facial unlocking. Ta-da. There we go. Pretty quick and reliable as well. No problems there. So you've got facial recognition. You can put in your pin if you want. You can use the fingerprint sensor on the back. You're covered as far as biometrics go. Also, you've got four cameras back there. You've got a 48 megapixel primary shooter. You've got an ultra wide, so you can take your wide angle photos. It doesn't have a telephoto zoom, so you're only going to be limited on the digital zoom there. So you're not going to be able to really reach out far and touch stuff. It gives you about four times zoom. And then you've got a macro lens, which is two megapixels, so you can get your up close and personal National Geographic shots. It's okay. It's not the greatest in the world. I'm not a real big fan of the two megapixel macro lenses. I much prefer the fives. The two, you really have to have a ton of brightness. And it's only two megapixels, so you're not going to get a whole bunch of detail in there. So it's there, just not my most favorite. There's also a two megapixel depth sensor on here, so you can do your bokeh shots, make your portrait shots. You can shoot portrait photos on the back and on the front, which is nice. And I'll show you a demonstration for that here in a little bit. And then you get a 16 megapixel camera on the front for your selfie camera. So you get a little peephole, punch out camera, whatever they want to call that, right up here centered and top on the phone. So you can take pictures and video that way as well. You can also shoot 1080p video on the front, limited to 30 frames per second. So 4K on the back, 10K, 10K, 1080p on the front. It's got a 6.7 inch LCD display. Now the display, it is 1080p. It's a full 1080p plus, FHD plus. So you get 1080p and they stretch it out for this long screen so that you get a really nice resolution for the size of the screen. It's 394 pixels per inch. So you get a really nice pixel density even though it's such a large screen, so that's nice. Now it doesn't have stereo speakers unfortunately. It's got one single downward firing speaker down here which is right next to your USB-C slot. You can charge this up to 30 watts. Now, they say that it'll give you up to 50% battery charge in just 20 minutes. That's really quite a bit. 30 watts, you got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here. That's a lot of battery storage. That's enough to get you well through the day. You shouldn't have any problems with battery on this phone. And you got the headphone jack down there. So, big battery, fast recharge. It even has 10 watts of wireless charging. Now, it doesn't have IP68 or IP67 dust and water resistance. It's not safe in the water. So if you're going to be out around the pool, if you're going to be doing anything near the water, maybe put this somewhere safe so you don't have to worry about, you know, getting your phone messed up. I'm really not an advocate for taking phones out in the water, and that also helps keep the price down. Blue is not really known for making really expensive phones. When you have to pay for that IP certification, it costs a lot of money. And when I was watching something before about OnePlus, OnePlus doesn't like to do the IP rating because they say it costs them $100 extra on the price tag for everyone that they want to add that rating onto. I don't take my phone in the water. If you want to take your phone in the water, this might not be the one for you, but it does help keep costs down. So there's a reason that companies don't do it. It's not just an arbitrary, hey, we're not going to do it. So no IP68. It does have Bluetooth 5, so you can use that so you can connect to your earbuds. And if you decide to pick up the Blue Area Pods Plus, those will connect to it, no problem. Now, in addition to all that, you also get 128 gigabytes of storage, I think that's perfectly fair for a $250 phone, especially if you can get it for $150. That's a steal of a deal. Now, if you want, you can put additional storage in there. You can add up to a 128 gigabyte SD card in here as well. And also it's a dual SIM phone. You can put two different SIM cards in here. So if you wanna roll with two different SIM cards, if you want a Cricket number, if you want a T-Mobile number, you can throw both of them in here and live your best life carrying one phone with two numbers. Now, when it comes to connectivity, it makes really good phone calls. The handset speaker is perfectly fine, so you don't have any worries there. The only concern that I have, it does have 4G LTE, which is nice. It's not a 5G phone, so you're not going to get that. That's another reason why the price is so low. You don't have 5G, but also you don't have band 71 or band 66, which are kind of the latest frequencies that T-Mobile is using and some of the other phone companies as well. So a lot of the newer coverage and expanded rural areas, like if you're inside the city, you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. Once you get outside the city, if you didn't used to have coverage a year or two ago, you might still have problems just because it doesn't have those newer frequencies or the 5G. One thing also, I did ask about this because a lot of unlocked phones that are not supported or carried by AT&T are having problems now. They're getting booted off the network. Currently, it does work with AT&T out of the box. Voice over LTE does work. It has certified patches that work and allow it to operate on the network. I did ask Blue about that. I do need to find out and get more clarification because my concern is, Yes, it works right now, but once 2G and 3G go out the door, I do have concerns if they're going to continue to allow it to be certified to operate on their network. There's not a lot of phones that do that 
that are unlocked, that are not ones that AT&T actually carries. So I hope they do. I think they might, but I'm not sure. I need to get more clarification on that. But as of right now, it works with AT&T, T-Mobile, and the other GSM unlocked network. Another cool feature about the phone is it has a built-in Google Assistant button right here on the left-hand side. You press it, fires up Google Assistant. The first time I ever remember this was on the LG G7, and it was one of the features I absolutely loved. The year that phone came out, I actually called the G7 my favorite phone of that year. Apparently it was listening to me. <laughs> so I really loved it back then on the G7. I'm really glad that it's here now. When it comes to performance, you're running the latest Android 11 on here. Now I know Android 12 is just around the corner, but this has Android 11, which is what any Android phone is shipping with right now because it's not officially available. The last one, the G90 Pro, came with Android 10. So this is a nice software upgrade year over year. They went ahead and installed it. It's not like it has 10 and then you have to upgrade it to 11. I like that. Some phones used to do that. They used to have like Android 8 and you would have to update it to 9 once you got it. This one has Android 11 straight out of the box. Now, it should get Android 12. That shouldn't be an issue. That's going to be coming down the road. Security updates. They're not always the fastest and the latest and greatest in that department. This one is running a May security patch on it. We're in August now, but this is pre-release. So I'm expecting at some point in time, shortly after the phone comes out, it'll probably get a security patch update to make sure that they stay current. I think they try to do them at least quarterly. Now, the phone itself, performance is solid. It's got a very light version of Android on it. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff loaded on here. There's not a whole bunch of pre-installed bloatware. Pretty much what you put on here is what you get. Sometimes when you get phones, they just have tons and tons of stuff on here. And that's something that people used to complain about with like the software suites that were loaded already on the blue phones a long time ago. They've come a long way since that and mostly just have the stock version on there. There's not really much of anything on here. I appreciate that as an owner and as a user because when I get it, I hate having to delete stuff. You have to go force uninstall stuff or turn things off. That's not something you have to worry about here. Day-to-day -day performance is good. It's good for gaming. I did test some stuff out. I've got some footage here for War Robots and for PUBG. Two games that I like to play when I'm testing out phones. They're really popular. They both run perfectly well. You can run War Robots up to 60 frames per second. It does skip a little bit every once in a while. If you want, you can turn it down to 30. That's what the default is. It, it runs better that way. But you can run up to 60. It's perfectly playable. That's how I was playing it. You can do PUBG on here. It has... Full HD graphics, you don't get the ultra high definition because this doesn't have a Quad HD Plus screen. And I don't even know if that's available for other phones yet. I've had problems with getting that. So PUBG works fine. You can play Call of Duty Mobile on here. You're going to get about 30 frames per second on most of these games, which is very good whenever it comes to a budget gaming phone. Even Fortnite gets about 30 frames per second as well. You can play that if you want. So as a budget gaming phone, it checks a lot of boxes. And then as far as the camera, I know I talked about the specs earlier. Here's some camera samples so you can see them yourself. I took some with the primary camera. I took some with the macro lens camera, the wide angle, and covered pretty much all the bases on here so you can get a good feel for what the selfie camera is capable of, what the regular photos, and it's perfectly good for day-to-day -day photo taking. If you want really good pictures, you're probably going to want to get like a Pixel phone, and that's you can get one of those if you want. That's not what Blue is known for, but having this four camera array gives you the opportunity to take whatever photos you want, and then you can shoot video as well. So on the video side, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a demonstration of the front-facing selfie camera video and also for the primary shooter, the 48 megapixel as well. Let's take a look at it. So here's the video camera capabilities on the selfie cam. It shoots up to a maximum of 1080p at 30 frames per second. And of course you can hear the little dog chirping in the background. But I wanted to take this out so you can get a good feel for it. It's an okay camera. It's not the greatest in the world. It's the same one they had last go around. But if you want to take some video, you want to do some selfie stuff, you want to upload your stuff to the IG, the Instagram, Twitter, social media, and stuff like that, it's perfectly capable. Not going to win any awards in this department, but the feature's there, and it works as it's advertised. All right, so here we have a video sample with the 4K at 30 frames per second. Also, I wanted to do this so you could get a feel for the built-in microphone that's on the phone. It's got decent audio for it, and for the price with what you're getting, it's not the most stellar or amazing video, video camera in the world, but it does give you the capabilities. If you want to go out, shoot some 4K, you can shoot some 1080p as well, and yeah, it's not too bad. In addition to being a 48 megapixel camera, it also has a 108 megapixel super zoom, which is a pixel binning thing that it does after the fact where it just jams more pixels in there. So if you look at the picture after the fact, 
if you shoot it on 108 megapixel super zoom, you can zoom in way farther on the picture and you don't lose detail. So that's a nice thing that they do with the photo taking capabilities as well. It does make for a larger picture size, but it gives you a lot more data in that same picture. So you get a higher quality image if you zoom in on it after you take the photo. I think I've pretty much covered all the bases on here. We've talked about performance. We talked about battery life, 5,000 milliamps. It's going to get you through the day, no problem. You get the included charger in the box. It's not like Samsung. It's not like Apple. It's not like Google is doing with the new Pixel phones moving forward. They give you the charger. They give you the power brick. They give you a case, a rugged case even, and a screen protector and an additional screen protector, the glass one that's inside the box. And you get earbuds. You've got everything you need in here straight out of the box. And we saw that in the unboxing experience. And even if you want, you can pick up a pretty inexpensive pair of their new earbuds. So that's what Blue really stands for, is providing good quality, well-performing things that look great, that look top-notch at a much more lower price. Because a lot of people don't need a $1,000 phone. A lot of people don't need a $500 phone. Sometimes a $150 to $200 phone is just what people need, especially for teenagers, for young kids. This is a great phone. If you want just a nice unlocked device, it's got the latest software on it and you don't have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money all the time. You don't have to lock yourself into a contract. It's a good opportunity to get an inexpensive phone. And if you get it while you're on sale, you're even better off. $149, I would recommend this phone to anybody any day of the week. At $249, it still undercuts a lot of the competition that's normally around the $300 price point. So it's still a very good phone at $249. And this Moonstone color is absolutely gorgeous. And for me, it would probably be worth the wait. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love the way this phone looks. The biggest upgrades on this phone really are the RAM. Last year, they had four gigs of RAM. This time, they have six. It's got the same processor, same storage. Pretty much everything else on the phone is identical, except that they have it with Android 11 straight out of the box. It's not the biggest upgrade in the world. The six gigs does help, especially with multitasking and performance. Overall, it's just an iterative upgrade. And I think that's reflected in the price even a year later. Add a little extra RAM. It's 149 bucks starting. If you can get one on sale, it's one heck of a deal. And then the $249 MSRP is still a good value. And yes, it would be nice if it had newer stuff, if it had a better screen, if it had a higher powered processor, some things like that. But unfortunately, this is what we get for this year. And it's still a good phone. So if it's something that you want to pick up, if you got a G90 Pro last year, definitely don't buy it. It's not for you. But if you've got an older series blue phone, or if you've got something that's kind of failing on you, you've got a phone that's been around the block for a couple of years, it's definitely something good to consider in the $150 to $250 department. I definitely give it a resounding two thumbs up on that one. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.